I had a good, happy childhood. I went to Allen Street School, 4th Street School, and uh, we had a nice neighborhood. We were lucky. We used to have a lot of fun there, a lot of activity for the poor kids like myself who lived on Front Street. And of course, the best part was Promenade Hill. We'd go up there to see the boats. The Hudson River Day Line boats used to go by twice a day until they went out of business. And uh, we used to see all the nice boats on their way to Albany or on their way to New York. And we'd love to get up on the Promenade Hill and watch them. And also the tugboats. We used to have a lot of fun watching them. They'd be dragging all kinds of stuff to New York on the fort boat. And uh, I had a good, happy childhood. They all did the same thing we did. We played on Front Street and on Promenade Hill. And we kept ourselves busy and out of trouble. Never had any trouble on Front Street. Matter of fact, they were all afraid of us. They thought we were a tough bunch, but we were not. We just liked everything to be right. I had a bad experience one day. I was running late from home. I went, we lived on North Front Street. I went home to have my lunch and I ran a little late and I had to hurry up and get back to school. So the ice wagon was going down the hill and I said, oh, I'll jump on the back of it. So I did, I jumped on, it was driven by a horse. I jumped in back of where you stood up and running down Front Street Hill. When they came to South Front Street where the school was on that street, the wagon kept going, didn't stop. And I thought I was smart, I'd jump off. Well, I jumped off, and let me tell you, I fell flat on my face. I was all <laughs> bruised up, and I went to school. Right after that, Allen Street School was right there. I went to school, and I'm in the cloakroom washing and cleaning myself up, and I was late. Well, the teacher heard me, so she came in and she said, what happened? And I told her that I jumped on the wagon. Oh. She says, don't ever do that again. You could get hurt. All right. I never did. I would never jump on a wagon again. But, you know, those were little experiences that we had. And another time, we had a man down at the end of our street. He was down at the Hudson Bay, they used to call it. And he was a great fisherman. He used to really catch a lot of nice fish, and he'd sell them. And he'd have them in a old rowboat with filled with water, and he'd have the live fishes there swimming around, ready to sell. So one day, we saw all these nice fishes that were good size, good to cook and eat, and we said, "Well, oh my God, what are these fishes doing? We didn't know what they were doing there. What are these fishes doing here? Oh, my mother would like these. She'd fry them and." We'd have a good fresh dinner. So we go home and we get a, cal a colander, you know, to drain. And we drain the little fishes. And we're just ready to go with home with them. And the man that owned the dock and the fishes saw us and he started hollering. Hey, what are you kids doing there? Get out of that boat. Oh, he scared the heck out of us that we jumped out of the boat and in the water and I fell in the water. Of course, it wasn't very deep water. I fell and got all wet. I went home soaking wet. My mother said, what happened? I told her, don't you ever, ever do that again. I never did, never did. But it was always something going on on my street, down on Front Street. That's where all the action was. <laughs> and uh, living on Promenade Hill, watching all the nice boats on the river. In the winter time, they'd all be down there ice skating. And then we also had a slaughterhouse down there. That was a poor section of the city. We were poor. Our parents 
you know, weren't Americanized, and they, they did all the bad work on the railroad tracks and the cement plants. They did all the bad work. They worked hard to give us what little they could. The area down there was great. I loved it. I loved living there. We'd go up on Promenade Hill most of the time and play and watch the boats. The boats were beautiful. And then we could look across the river. You see Athens, and you see all the homes there. It was beautiful. I think they still have the same thing there. I don't think anything has changed, but I haven't been down there in a long time. And before I die, I plan to go down there and take a good look at everything that I grew up with. That's so all I can tell you about that. Okay, so my name is Sarah Kendall, and I am I'm at the Whittier Adult Home in Ghent. It's March 8, 2013, and I'm here with Mary Potts. My name is Mary Potts. I live in Hudson, New York, and I'm a patient here. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about where you come from. Huh. First of all, I was born in Italy. I've lived in, then we came to Hudson, I've lived in Hudson all my life. That's where I came from and that's where I'm going to be. And can you tell me a little bit about your family? Yes, I had a mother and father, I was raised by a mother and father, and I had three sisters and a stepbrother. And we lived in Hudson all our lives. And that's it. And how did your family come to Hudson? Well, they had, they came here from Italy. They, my mother had a brother and his family living here, so that's how we came to live with them. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about your childhood in Hudson. Mm, I had a good, happy childhood. I went to Allen Street School, 4th Street School, and uh, we had a nice neighborhood. We were lucky we had Promenade Hill to play in, in Front Street Hill, and we had a lot to do. We had the reading room. We used to go there and read, and the teachers used to read stories to us, and that was very interesting. Christmas time, they put up a great big tree in the center of the hill going up to Promenade Hill, and it'd be all lit up. It was beautiful, and Christmas Eve, we, us kids all used to go there. We had Santa Claus in the reading room, which is another building, right, a, a journey, the firehouse, and uh, we used to have a lot of fun there, a lot of activity for the poor kids like myself who lived on Front Street. We had a lot to do and we enjoyed every bit of it. And of course the best part was Promenade Hill. We'd go up there to see the boats. The Hudson River Day Line boats used to go by twice a day until they went out of business. And uh, we used to see all the nice boats on their way to Albany or on their way to New York and we'd love to get up on the Promenade Hill and watch them, and also the tugboats. We used to have a lot of fun watching them. They'd be dragging all kinds of stuff to New York on the flat boat. And uh, I had a good, happy childhood. They all did the same thing I did. We played on Front Street and on Promenade Hill and we kept ourselves busy and out of trouble. Never had any trouble on Front Street. Matter of fact, they were all afraid of us. They thought we were a tough bunch, but we were not. We just liked everything to be right. It was a lot of fun growing up. Christmas Eve, every Christmas Eve, they'd have the band down on Promenade Hill, at the foot of the hill, play all the Christmas songs, and we'd be 
all around a big tree that they put up and singing Christmas songs. And then they had the reading room right there. And they'd send us in there and we'd walk around. And there was three or four stops that we would make and they all gave us presents, Christmas presents. We'd have nice pair of mittens made by the, um, the Thermo Mills. They were in Hudson. They donated them. Well, we had a lot of things. I can't remember them all, but it was a happy day. We'd see Santa Claus and the band playing and receive these nice little gifts. It was great. We looked forward to it. That's so all I can tell you about that. Can you tell me more about the school that you mentioned, the Allen Street School? Oh, yes. I went to Allen Street School, and the school went from kindergarten up to the fifth grade at the time. And then from there, you were transferred up to 4th Street School. We used to call 4th Street School. And there, they started at the sixth grade and, and up. And we had very nice teachers. And I loved school, and uh, I had a bad experience one day. I was running late from home. I went, we lived on North Front Street. I went home to have my lunch, and I ran a little late, and I had to hurry up and get back to school. So the ice wagon was going down the hill, and I said, oh, I'll jump on the back of it. So I did, I jumped down. <laughs> It was driven by a horse. I jumped in back of where you stood up, and running down Front Street Hill. When they came to South Front Street, where the school was on that street, the wagon kept going, didn't stop. And I thought I was smart. I jumped off. Well, I jumped off, and let me tell you, I fell flat on my face. I was all <laughs> bruised up when I went to school. Right after that, Allen Street School was right there. I went to school, and I'm in the cloakroom washing and cleaning myself up, and I was late. The teacher heard me, so she came in and she said, What happened? And I told her that I jumped on the wagon. Oh, she says, Don't ever do that again. You could get hurt. All right. I never did. I will never jump on a wagon again. But, you know, those were little experiences that we had. And another time, we had a man down at the end of our street. He was down at the Hudson Bay, they used to call it. And he was a great fisherman. He used to really catch a lot of nice fish, and he'd sell them. And he'd have them in an old rowboat with, filled with water, and he'd have the live fishes there swimming around, ready to sell. So one day, we saw all these nice fishes. They were good size, good to cook and eat. And we said, oh my God, what are these fishes doing? We didn't know what they were doing there. What are these fishes doing here? Oh, my mother would like these. She'd fry them and we'd have a good fresh dinner. So we go home and we get a, cal a colander, you know, to drain. And we drain the little fishes and we were just ready to go with home with them. And the man that owned the dock and the fishes saw us and he started hollering, hey, what are you kids doing there? Get out of that boat. Oh, he scared the heck out of us that we jumped out of the boat and in the water and I fell in the water. Of course, it wasn't very deep water. I fell and got all wet. I went home soaking wet. My mother said, what happened? I told her, don't you ever, ever do that again. I never did. Never did. But it was always something going on on my street, down on Front Street. That's where all the action was. <laughs> we enjoyed it. So that's how I grew up. I had a mother and a father and three sisters and a stepbrother. And we had a lovely childhood. My mother and father didn't have a lot of money, but they gave us all they could afford. And we were happy with it because 
we weren't the only family living down here that didn't have too much money. What we had, we appreciate and we enjoyed it. So that was my childhood. My happy parents, my sisters and a brother, and uh, living on Promenade Hill, watching all the nice boats on the river. In the winter time, they'd all be down there ice skating. And then we had a nice house down there. And they used to cut the ice in the winter time, and they, they'd ha draw it up into their big shed that they had there. So the, the, the ice packs were in big, great chunks, and they'd be sliding and drop in this big house where they filled the ice house, they used to call it. We used to like to watch it. And then we also had a slaughterhouse down there. And when they had a slaughter or an animal, uh, we ran away, we didn't want to see it. But they did a lot of that down there. It was a, a, a happy neighborhood. All the, all the kids were all the same. Nobody was richer than the other or snooty than one or the other. We were just a bunch of good kids. Never got in any trouble. Never. Big, I'm talking about big trouble. Little trouble like taking the, uh, the little fishes out of the boat. <laughs> and the man was selling them for bait. And we scooped them up in, in a... A pan and we were going to take him home and he saw us and he yelled at us what the hell are you doing there get the hell out of that boat he scared us so that we lost the, the strainer that my mother gave me to go get the fish <laughs> fell in the water got all wet and went home my mother said don't you ever ever do that again and we never did. If your mother told you or your father told you not to do anything, we did not do it. Never. Never disobey your parents. We had a good, happy childhood, as far as I can remember. Going to school, going to Sunday school, going to church. Uh, we took part in everything that we could get. And we got plenty. Then, of course, once a year, we had the big Worth House, that's a big hotel in Hudson. And every Christmas time, sometimes before Christmas, maybe a week before or so, they would put on a big dinner for all us kids that lived down on Front Street because that was a poor section of the city. We were poor. Our parents, you know, weren't Americanized. And they, they did all the bad work on the railroad tracks and the cement plants. They did all the bad work. They worked hard to give us what little they could. So we were happy. Happy childhood. And of course, the area down there was great. I loved it. I loved living there. We'd go up on Promenade Hill most of the time and play and watch the boats. The boats were beautiful. And then we could look across the river, you see Athens, and you see all the homes there. It was beautiful. I think they still have the same thing there. I don't think anything has changed, but I haven't been down there in a long time. And before I die, I plan to go down there and take a good look at everything that I grew up with. I loved it. So that's all I can say <laughs> about it. Could you tell me more about the work that your parents did? What, dear? Could you tell me more about the work that your family did? Well, my mother stayed home. She had five children. And my father worked on the railroad. They didn't make big money, but they made enough to keep us healthy, fed us, and clothed us. And I guess they were happy just having to do that. Today, we would not be satisfied with that. But we were at the time. So My did you father worked hard for his money on the railroad. Out in the cold weather, I remember him coming home from work late in the afternoon, and he was in the winter time, and he was so cold, he sat down in a chair by the stove, and we had to pull his shoes, boots or whatever they had, 
off, his feet were practically frozen. I don't know how they did it. They worked very, very hard to raise a family, but they made it. And they were happy in their own way. And us kids were happy too. And of course we had the church right there too. We had everything we wanted right there on Front Street. On Marketplace we had our beautiful church. And then everything changed. Church moved up on Second and Union. And we no longer played on Promenade Hill. We used to sleigh ride down Front Street Hill. That was a big long hill. You went way down by the docks. But we enjoyed it. I enjoyed every bit of my childhood. And of course I was lucky to have my parents. A lot of kids that we played with either didn't have a mother or a father. And we used to feel very sorry for them because they missed something in life. But we managed. We were all happy kids. Were there other Italian families in Hudson, like yours? Oh, yes. That's where they all were, all down on Front Street, all down street, packed. And we had the church, and we went to the public schools, and we had a good life. I was born in Italy when my mother came here with, and I had older sisters. They were older than me. When my mother came here, we settled in Hudson. We never moved out of Hudson. <laughs> They're all my life, which I loved. Hudson is my home. And on Christmas, they all this, the ladies' sodality and the, well, you know, the people that were in charge of having all the feast days like that. Just at Christmas time, they go all out. They have so many toys they give us. And of course they had the firehouse down here. And it was a nice thing because they had everything in the firehouse, the gifts that they were giving out. And we all got in a row and marched in the firehouse and were all around. And they had four or five stops. And each stop gave out a present. And we look forward to that day since the beginning <laughs> of the year. <laughs> It was what I loved growing up the way I did. I loved the street, and I loved Promenade Hill, and I loved the river. We used to go down, watch the boats. I loved everything about it. Most of all, we had our schools. All we had to do was walk down the hill. We weren't too far from them. And we lived a good life. My mother made sure she wrapped us up good in the winter time when we went to school. She'd wrap our heads up in a, a shawl. Oh my God, you think we were freezing. But maybe in them days we were. I think I used to hear my mother say later on, later years in life, how when she first came here it was so cold in the winter time. But she thinks the weather changed. And it, it got a lot warmer than it was when they came here. So we stayed in Hudson. I grew up in Hudson and I loved it. I loved every bit of it. I'd love to go back again, be a kid. But I go down here every so often and watch the boats and go up on Promenade Hill in the park and reminisce. And it does me good because I will never forget growing up on Front Street. That was part of my life. Not only mine, I had three other sisters. All of us did the same thing. Hmm. I don't know what else. Can you tell me about what you did when you finished school? Well, when I finished school, my parents did not have a lot of money. So we could not further our education. We had to leave school at a certain age when you were liable for it and go to work. And we go to work in a factory. Uh, we had, uh, they used to call that the Swansdown factory. It was a big factory down by the Hudson Bay. 
and it was a very nice place to work. They used to make winter sweaters, and we always found jobs, and we couldn't wait to get paid on Saturday and run home and bring your mother the pay envelope. Oh, look what I made this week, or look what we did this week, and my mother really appreciated it because then we got to have a little better uh, things in life. But it was okay. Whatever we had, we appreciated. And I think that's more than they do today. You can't give them enough today. I know that because I went through with my children. I had two, a boy and a girl. But still in all, Hudson is my home. Could you tell me more about your work at the factory? Oh, well, now let me see. We used to work, we made uh, underwear, fleece underwear, you know, two-piece underwear for men and for women. And we, the children under 15, or 15 until you're 17, you could not work the full eight hours a day, according to law. You were not 15, you were maybe 13, 14, and sometimes, you know, you were eligible to quit school because they needed your help at home. I don't know if they do that today or not, but in them days they did. If your parents needed you to help them with money and get a job, they would let you leave school. And that's what I had to do, leave school and go to work in the factory. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed running home with my pay envelope. Mom, here's my envelope. We used to bring the envelope with the money and never even opened it. I don't think they do that today. They work, they give their parents just so much money. Well, that was not the kind of life I had. I was glad to help. We were growing up and I wanted things and that's the only way I could get them. I had to earn and go out and work and earn it and I did, no question about it. it. was, You know, you had to do it, you did it, that's all. If you wanted it, that's what you had to do. And it worked out. <coughs> Everything was fine. If I had to do it over again, I would do the same thing. And we had a group of women, upper class women, that lived up uptown, and they used to come and teach us Sunday school. And I used to enjoy them too. They were very, very good to us. They'd help us very, very much. We really got to learn a lot by these few people who lived in Hudson, and they were the upper class people. And they taught us a lot. If you wanted to learn, you could learn. If you didn't want to learn, it was no use. And I wanted to learn. And I did. I was very glad but happy about it. And my parents were too. Because some of the kids didn't want to go to school. They just wanted to quit and do nothing and hang around in the streets and what have you. We didn't do that. My mother was a great church woman. She went to church every Sunday, Saturday, feast days, whatever. My mother was a churchgoer. And my father was too for a man. You didn't see too many men going to church in them days. My father was one of them. We had a happy childhood, poor, but we made good what we had. Very good. And I had a beautiful sisters and a brother. Three sisters I had. I don't know what else to tell you. Did you continue living on Front Street as an adult or did you live somewhere else in Hudson? No, after I married, I moved away from Front Street, which I regret every day and moved up on Warren Street between 2nd and 3rd and lived there. And then when I bought my own home, 
my husband and I, we lived up on Green Street for many years. And my, I had one daughter, and she went to St. Mary's School. She graduated from St. Rose in Albany, and she became a Hudson City school teacher. That was the only child I had. And then she passed away. Well, I think she was like in her 30s, which was a very sad day for me. I will never forget her. But, you know, in life you have to have the bad with the good. And I made the best of it. I never regretted anything. I just kept going. And I think that's what does you good. Don't stop and think about it and be bitter, just keep going. And I had to learn that myself, and I did, it worked. And I loved Hudson. But you grow up in it, you're sure you love it. You don't know any different from anybody else of the city. Once in a while, my father, working on the railroad, used to have a pass on the railroad once a year he'd have a pass for the whole family. And he would take us to New York on the train. And we had a, there was some relation to my father, and like cousin or something. And they were very, very friendly because they came here from Italy and they were always kept close. And we used, they, they settled in New York City. So when we took a train ride, when my father had a free pass, you could take the whole family. After you worked on the railroad so many years, you got this big pass. Other than that, you only had a little pass. You could go like to Albany, maybe New York or someplace like that. And uh, we used to go on them trips and I used to love it. I don't know what else to tell you. You mentioned your husband. Could you tell me more about your husband? My husband lived in Stuyvesant, and he was a, came from a family of five boys and I think three girls, and we married and settled in Hudson, and we've lived in Hudson the rest of our lives, and I had two children, a boy and a girl, and the boy died when he was maybe a teenager, and my daughter lived to become a mother, and kept house and always kept coming to take care of her mother and father. And we had a good life, and, but my children did not live very long. My daughter, I can't remember now just how old she was, but she was married and had children of her own. And she passed away and life kept going on for us. We've always been a very close family, kept in touch with everybody. And we enjoyed that. Once a year, Christmas time, if they lived in New York, they'd come up and spend the week with us. Or if they lived around here, we'd go and spend the week with them. But I had a very good childhood. No regrets. Poor, but happy. And that meant a lot. My mother and father did the best they could. But you know, coming here from the old country, no education, so the only jobs you could get was either working in a factory for the woman and the railroad and the cement plants for the men. That's what we had. But we never gave up, kept going. And things got better and better and better. And that's what we worked for. You said things got better and better? Yes. Can you tell me more about that? Well, I think because we looked more for it as we got older, we wanted to better ourselves. We could not go to school because my mother had to send us out to work, so she'd have a little income coming. With my father's job on the railroad, that was the only one working, and with us girls, my mother had five girls, with us girls, we used to bring little money home for her, and we got by. We got by. And we always helped one another, even after we were married. 
We always lived in Hudson. None of us ever moved away. <laughs> Which today they can't wait till they get out of here. But I loved Hudson. I loved every minute that I lived here. I grew up a very happy little girl. Go to school and play up on promenade. We were lucky we had promenade hill. A beautiful place to play in. We used to sit on the grass and you played that little game with a knife. PD, I guess they used to call it. We spent hours on the grass up there playing with a little pocket knife. So that's how I grew up, honey. So as an adult, did you continue working at the factory or did you well, have other work? Yes, I did. I uh, went to school and I got up, as, I went to the seventh grade and then I got sick and my mother had to keep me home. I developed tuberculosis for some reason or other. So my mother had to keep me home for a year and took care of me. They wanted me to go to the sanitarium but my mother wouldn't let me go. She said she would take care of me. So the nurse, the city nurse used to come every so often and check my mother and me, how we were doing in my house. And we, my mother did a very good job taking care of me. She got me out of it. I, and I look, I'm, what am I now, 90? So she did a good job. I could have died with tuberculosis. So I had a good life, no complaints. My marriage was good, and I, I had a, a daughter, and I had a son, but he passed away when he was a little boy. I don't know what happened. I can't remember whether, it, it was one of those sicknesses like the scarlet fever mm -hmm. or you know, when you can't move your, your muscles. What do you call that? I don't know. I can't think of it. It'll come to me afterwards. But anyway, uh, that's what we were poor, but so was everybody else on our street. So we were all in the same boat. We were all happy kids. And of course, we were very lucky. We had this great big room uh, adjo adjoining the firehouse down there, and they let us kids have it, and the teachers used to come in certain days, like we'd have school, lessons, and what have you. Then the girls used to learn how to sew and knit. I learned to knit there, and really beautiful knit work I used to do. We learned a lot of things. They, oh, people uptown that had the time, they used to come down and teach us, and we loved it. And so, you know, they believed in sending us, we used to call that the reading room, but it was a recreation center for teenagers. She was happy to send us there, and that's where we got all the education. I don't mean school, but the other things in life you enjoy. I had a very good childhood. Poor, but happy. We made the best with what we had. I wished it could have been better, but it still was all right. Mary, can you tell me about the Howard Hotel? Well, the Howard? We used to, my husband and I, after I was married, uh, my husband used to like to work in restaurants. So then we finally bought the Howard Hotel. And my husband and I ran that for quite a few years. Uh, um, and then, you know, you get older and you kind of cut down your work. So we decided we sell it and we did. And they still kept it up. And uh, we got out of the business. But uh, it was hard work. I worked very hard there. You had a cook, and you know, to cook to police people was not easy. Or a lot of hard work, but we survived. We made money. We worked hard for it. 
but it paid off in the end. Am I boring you with all this? No, no, not at all. <laughs> can you can you tell me about the people who used to stay in the Howard Hotel? Well, most of them at the time, they were working men who had jobs at the cement plant in Hudson or on the railroads. So they lived here all week at the hotel. On the weekends, they would go home. We had a lot of that in the early years, in the 1900s. Then after that, things kind of change. People stayed more in Hudson. And we had a good business. But we worked hard. Worked very hard. Long hours. But I enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoyed growing up in Hudson. Oh, very much. You've told me a lot about Front Street. Could you talk about the street where the Howard Hotel was? The Howard Hotel was on Warren Street, below below Third Street, and uh, it had been there for many years before we bought it, and then we took it over, and it was more or less run like an Italian restaurant, because we were Italian, and I had Italian food there, and people used to stay there that worked in Hudson all week and would go home weekends. So we had a lot of trans, is that what you call it? A lot of that. And we treated them line good. Two, Megan, and they stayed. And we were a very happy group of people living there. All Italians. It was great. I don't think they live like that anymore. They all want to run away. But that's okay. To each his own. Could you tell me maybe about how you've seen Hudson change since you were a child? How things change? How you've seen Hudson change, the city. Well, the Italian people, most of the time that I can remember growing up, all lived down the street, on Front Street, all the downtown, and they were a happy group of people, and they really st stayed together a whole lot. And they were proud of their heritage, so they kept it when they were here. They never left it out of their mind, so that's the kind of people we were. So I enjoyed growing up as an Italian, Learn to be a good Christian, learn to go to church every Sunday, learn to obey your mother and father. Those were the most important to my mother and father. And we abided by it. And I lived a happy childhood. We used to run all over Front Street up on Promenade Hill. And I told you about the fishes. <laughs> I think of that so many times. Um, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> Here, this man had all these fishes in the rowboat with water. They live fishes. He was selling them for bait. And here we were scooping them up with a macaroni strainer to bring home to our mothers to cook. They were going to fry fish. He start. He saw us and he started hollering. Oh. You know, it, down at the dock, it's just plain woods there and around. There's nothing, no houses and no nothing. So you could see from a great distance. So he saw us in the boat. And he ran up there, get the hell out of that boat. What are you kids doing here? Oh, we dropped, uh, my mother had a nice strainer. It was pretty new. And I took that to scoop up the fish. When he hollered at us, I dropped everything, the fish, the strainer, and ran. And never got the strainer back. That was funny. But the little things like that made us happy. We didn't have to have a sailboat or a motorcycle or... Who, who had a bicycle? We didn't even have a bicycle. But isn't it funny we were happy just the same? 
I love to live the old, old memories. Mm -hmm. I will never forget them. And in them days too, you got a chance to go on the day boat to New York. Oh my God, that was the best thing could ever happen to me. I thought that was the best thing in the world. We get on the boat nine o'clock in the morning, go down to New York, and you get a night boat coming back. It was beautiful. The river was so busy with boats in them days. Whatever happened to it? I don't know. But I think in them days we had more fun as children than they do now. We've got to have all these big toys to play with. We never had that. We were just as happy. Maybe even more. Well, that's it. There's much more I can say. Can you... What, can you tell me about places that you remember spending time when you were an adult? What are some of the places that you remember from that well, period? Well, we used to take the day boat and ride down to Kingston because we could stay there a couple of hours and take the boat coming back from New York to, to Hudson. And that was a big thing for us to do. I remember doing a lot of that. I think it was like 75 cents. To from Hudson to Kingston, and we used to go down, and you'd leave here by 11 o'clock in the morning, and you'd be back here by 4 o'clock. And it was, a, we were happy with it. Now they want to stay all week. They wouldn't be happy for two, three hours. But we had to be, and had no, no choice. But I was happy, happy child growing up. I'm really interested in in some of the factories that used to be in Hudson. Could you tell me more about Hudson's factories? Well, downtown, they used to have the mills, thermal mills. They used to have, they made knit sweaters for men, women, and children. That was a big factory that was way down on Front Street by the river. It was a big, they employed a lot of people from Hudson. And matter of fact, I worked there when I first got out of school. And they'd have these big, long sheets of uh, knit goods. And they we used to have to line them up, maybe 12 deep. And then they, we'd have a man there that had an electric saw, table saw. And he'd have a pattern and he'd we lined them up maybe 12, 15 deep, and he used to cut them with this electric saw. And they made beautiful sweaters, beautiful, all knit sweaters. I worked there for a good many years. We were glad because we made good money there. Couldn't run home quick enough to bring the, our pay envelope home. My mother was so happy. She, she really enjoyed her children because we enjoyed her and my father. We'd want to do everything to make them happy. And we did. We were a happy family. Not only us, a lot of others in the same boat. Very good. I love Hudson. I grew up in it, and I still love Hudson. So tell me about after you and your husband sold the Howard Hotel. What was that? After you and your husband sold the Howard Hotel, mm -hmm. then what did you do? Well, my husband got a job with the General Electric in Schenectady. So he went to work there. I had two children. I was bringing them up. And he used to come home on weekends. And then finally he got tired of commuting. He quit that job and he went in business for himself. He used to clean beer pipes in, in the bars. Uh, you know, they have that cabinet that they draw the beer from, and every so often, you gotta clean those pipes that take the beer from the barrels up to where you pour them in the glass. Because if you didn't, 
they'd accumulate a lot of that yeast and you couldn't serve a nice glass of beer. So that was my husband's job. He loved to do that. He had a remote every day, different place, and he used to clean these beer pipes. He made a lot of good money and a lot of good friends. So we did that most of his life. I had a daughter, she went to St. Rose, she became a school teacher, and she taught school in Hudson. And then she passed away, uh, well, she had three boys, she was married and passed away with three boys and her husband. That was the saddest day in my life, really, and my husband's too. But life goes on. I never quit. I kept going on. I'm not a quitter, if that's what you want to say. Kept going. And God was good to me. He kept me going. And the things are so different today. Mm. People don't have the faith that we used to have. Uh, they're different. All they want to do is make a quick dollar and go out and spend it. So, I, I will say we didn't have everything we wanted, but we were happy kids because we were all in the same boat. One didn't have more than the other, so everybody got along. But those Christmas fest festivals that we used to have down there at the foot of Promenade Hill were the greatest in my life. Because I don't know how they could afford it, but they had the Italian band playing, I think for two or three nights. And they'd give out all these, well, the, the factory that made Union underwear, Every Christmas they'd make the special order of mittens for us out of this material. It was fleece lined and they made gloves for the kids. And at Christmas time, we'd have a big festival down at Promenade Hill, foot of Promenade Hill. And we'd, we'd give out all these gloves that they, the factories had made and given them to the poor people. and candy, gumdrops especially, I remember them so well. They used to love to give us gumdrops. And uh, every Christmas, you know, not Christmas Eve, but a couple of days before Christmas, we'd have the big festival down there. We'd give out all the candy, popcorn, and poor kids that we were, we enjoyed it, we loved it. And we were couldn't wait for Christmas to come. And we were all happy. Nobody had any quarrels with one another because we were all happy. I'm wondering, Mary, you've told me so much about your childhood, and I'm wondering about your, about your daughter when she was a child in Hudson, how she spent her time. Oh, she was a very active kid. She went to St. Mary's School, and uh, they had a nice group of girls and they made a lot of themselves and working in the school, helping the nuns. And she enjoyed herself doing that. She worked for the school, helped with all that, what needed to be done. She helped. She enjoyed it too. Well, all I can say was we never had everything we wanted, but we had enough to make us happy. I think because we were all in the same boat. Mm. All the kids. On Front Street, we lived there for years. Same group of people. Mary, could you tell me when you, you told me a little bit about your work with the Howard Hotel. When you tell me, when you think about your, your, your favorite memories from that time. Well, mm. I had so many favorites that I really couldn't say. We and my husband and I enjoyed 
the hotel. We enjoyed the work, and mostly the people that stayed there were working class of people. They would go home weekends, and they'd stay all week at the hotel, and I would f cook for them. They'd have their home cooked meals every night, just like they were home. And we did that for quite a few years, and I enjoyed doing it. it gave me something to do. I enjoyed cook. I enjoyed cooking. Anyway, my other three sisters don't want no part of cooking, but I enjoy doing it. I like to cook. Could you tell me about Warren Street during that time? Oh, Warren Street was a very busy street, and especially downtown. We kept them busy. I don't know how we did it, but we did. Every, every, anything that went on was downtown on Warren Street. And, well, we had everything there. We had the Jewish synagogue. We had the Italian church. We had St. Mary's up at 3rd Street. Uh, we were in a very busy section of the city. We kept going. And it was wonderful. Oh, dear old Hudson. I will never forget Hudson. What were some of the other businesses that you remember on Warren Street? Uh, businesses were there. Most of them downtown were little Italian restaurants. Uptown, we had like Marsh's, was a general store, clothing store. Maskins was a men's clothing store. Uh, we had a few of them. That's what mostly was in Warren Street uptown. Downtown, we used to have the Italian section, and at Christmas time especially, they would go to Albany, the owners, and bring down all the good Italian food that they made up there and sell it here. It was a busy, busy place at Christmas. All good food. They worked hard, but they made life pleasant for a lot of us kids. And I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, we were poor, but not that poor. We, we ate good. My mother made sure of that. Most of her money went on food that my father brought home. Then when us girls got old enough, we went to work. We used to bring home our pay envelope. We didn't even open it. We'd bring it just like we got it, we'd bring it home. They don't do that today. No, oh, no. But we didn't, my mother didn't say we had to either. We just knew they needed it more than we could do with it. So we used to bring it home. And it worked out fine. Mary, how did you meet your husband? Mm, how did I meet my husband? Well, he, he didn't live in Hudson. He lived up in Stuyvesant. And I had some friends that lived there uh, that I knew. So one night they came to Hudson and they said, let's go for a ride. It was Chris Casa, his sister, Marguerite Casa, was quite a few of us, so we went for a ride, and they took us to Stuyvesant. And my husband, this was at night, like maybe 8 o'clock, he was sitting on a fence up in Stuyvesant playing the harmonica. So they said, oh, we're going to stop and see Joe Potts. I didn't know Joe Potts from Adam. Okay. So we go up there, and it was three or four of us girls, and this one guy that used to take us riding, he had a car, and he used to take us riding. So we go up the stairs, and here's my husband on a, a, a little bridge that went over a little creek, sitting on the bridge playing a harmonica. And they said, oh, here's Joe Pross, we're gonna stop and see him. Okay, so we stopped. And that's the first I met my husband. So a little while after that, he used to come into Hudson and he'd always look me up and we started dating, went with him three years and then we got married. 
moved happy ever after until my husband passed away too. I lost my husband and my daughter. Wasn't a very good life. But I had good times and I had bad times, so it balanced out. It's okay. I thank God for what I had. It was enough to keep me going. I was happy. But I'll never forget getting those little mini fishes out of that boat. <laughs> oh, God. I couldn't imagine what they were doing in the little boat with the, in a rowboat with water and all these little fishes. But he was selling them down here for bait. And here we are fooling around with them. Mary, I am so inspired by your health and your longevity. Could you talk about your life now? Well, I have a lot of empty places in my heart that I lost so many people in my family. I lost my sisters, my husband, and then to top it all off, I lost my daughter. And it was very hard for me to go on, but I prayed and I did what God wanted me to do, church got interested in doing things for the church because my husband passed away after that and I cut myself busy doing that. My daughter went to St. Mary's school and I got active in the, the school mothers and uh, it kept me busy and we, we kept going, we went on and it didn't hurt anything. Worked hard. Hard work never kills anybody anyway. Could you tell me about some of your friends, some of your support in Hudson? Well, most of, you know, when you lived in Hudson all your life, you meet the same kind of people that lived here all their life. So we knew each other like you were brothers and sisters. We grew up with them. We were very happy with what we had. And I think that's what made us good people. We didn't complain, we just kept going on, hoping that someday it'd be better. And it did get better. It got very good for us. So I think we worked hard to do that. But we made it. We never had any were children in big troubles or none of that. And, it, it, you know, Front Street, was a poor place that had the reputation of immigrants coming here and mostly Italian and uh, but we never had any troubles we our kids lived a good life my mother and father were very happy they worked hard but we were happy because everybody else was in the same boat <laughs> What else to tell you, honey? Well, I'm wondering, while, while we have a recorder on, are there other things that you would want to make sure become part of a, of a record? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. All I know is we, we were kids. We used to go picking cherries. And so one day, this my friend and I, we were like 12, 13 years old. We were picking cherries down in Claremont. And so we didn't feel like picking this one day. We were picking there for a long time. So it was getting towards the end of the season. So, you know, 12, 13 years old, you feel you worked hard enough. It's time to have a good time to right near the end. So we decided, well, we were going to play hooky. So we were picking cherries down at Glencoe Mills. We start walking, and we quit. And we said, the, the farmer said, well, if you girls quit, I'm not taking you home. You have to wait 
until I take the group of girls, the people home that work here. I can't make a special trip for you girls. Oh, that's all right. We'll walk, we said. So we start walking from Glencoe Mills on the highway. And we walked maybe about a mile or so. And this man comes along with a car and he stops and he said, where are you kids going? Oh, we're going to hustle. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, we worked on this farm and he fired us because we didn't pick enough cherries. So we quit and, we, and he fired us anyway. Oh yeah, well, come on, I'm going to Hudson. I'll take you to, to Hudson. So we get in his car, sat in the back seat, and he takes us into Hudson, and he stops at the police station. And he I said, like three. Uh, uh, you sit right in the car and wait for me. I have some business to take care of here. So we sat in the car, and he went in the police station. And we I sat there, and he was there. A little bit longer than we, we thought he was going to be. And we start saying, what's he doing? What's taking him so long? Gee, maybe he's telling them that we, he found us on the road hitchhiking. And that was against the law then. So we got scared. We thought the police were going to come out and arrest us. So we got out of his car and we start running home. We were only up above 3rd Street, where the police station is. We lived on Front Street, so we ran home. And we were so scared that they were going to come after us because we were hitchhiking and get arrested. We ran and closed our front door. I, I did anyway. I was so scared. Was going. I didn't tell my mother. But we, every now and then I'd open the front door and I'd look to see if I... <laughs> While he was standing there looking for us or what, nothing ever happened. So, that, but I was scared to death that we were going to be arrested for hitchhiking. So, they never bothered us. Good times and bad times, both. Mostly good times. Where was that that you would pick cherries? Where was that? Down in Blanco Mills. What was his name? Oh, oh, dear, Mr. Fix. I don't know if that's Lincoln Mills or what it is. It was more in Greenport. He was right outside of Hudson. John Fix and his family. They used to come in Hudson every morning, seven, six o'clock, pick us up and take us to the farm. And we'd pick cherries all day and then they'd take us back home at night. And we made good money picking cherries and strawberries. And of course, like I say, every time we earned any money, we ran home with it. My mother was thrilled. That was a little extra money for her. And she felt sorry that we had to go out and work and earn it, but she took good care of us. She'd buy us a new dress every now and then. Any, any holiday, we'd get something new, which made us happy, and life went on. But you'll never see them, th that lifestyle again, never. Growing up, that I went through with life, it was a lot of fun. And we worked hard to, to make it a lot of fun. And every time we did something we got paid for, we ran home with the money and gave it to my mother. My mother couldn't appreciate it enough. Then she'd buy us goodies, cookies and what have you. It's the only time she could afford to buy them. But it was okay, we made it. I think it made better people of us kids. It's not like it is today, I can tell you that. <laughs> is there anyone else you think you want to remember on the, on the record? Do you mean people? People or places? Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of 
the kids, we were all on Front Street, happy group of kids. One was Senior Conqueror. She was a psycho at the time. Oh, Nicolina and Jen Jenny Gallo. Um, Mary Tommaso. Now these were my best friends. There were a lot of others too. And Paul Montana. Nick LaPera. Mm, I can't remember them all. If I sat down and wrote them, I, I know. Did you but, know your friends from childhood as an adult also? Were they, were they still in your life? Yes, some of them are. Some of them passed away, some of them moved away. And uh, But what was left of us and Hudson were still very, very close. Very, very close. And I think that's wonderful. We all look at us and happy people. And you know, we were discriminated when we were kids. The Italian people, well, you, know, you were a very poor class of people, which they were, but they couldn't help that. They came from the old country. They didn't know what it was living in America until they got used to it. And it took them many years to get where they were. They worked hard at it, but they made it too. Thank God, because good people, hard-working people, that's all I can say about them. They're very good. Most of them, you know, you do get some that are, but it's okay, worked out. I'd do it all over again if I could. That's how much I loved it. And of course, when I go down Front Street now, which it isn't very often, it's not the same. Not the same at all. But I remember the good things about it. And what was nice about it, you know, us kids all played together. We were very good friends. We were all in the same boat, our parents could give us just so much and that was it. We were all happy so nobody could say you got more than I have and oh I, I got a new dress and you didn't get one. It wasn't like that at all. We were all happy kids and we took what our parents gave us. What did they do with all my Kleenex? Oh. We've got it right here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mary, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you so much oh, for sharing welcome. some of your memories with us. I wish I could remember more. <laughs> well, we can do this again at any point if more things come to mind. Okay. I'll leave my contact information here. Oh, good. And if good. you think of some stories that you wish you had told, yes, I'll come back and we can sit oh, right wonderful. here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. All right. That's a good idea. And you think of anything that maybe I forgot to tell, but how would you know? Oh, there's so much. Thank <laughs> <laughs>